This is the second part of their project rebalance because um, the first part is all the skills with Hunter and not Hunter, sorry, Thieving, Agility, Slayer, um, and two other garbage skills I don't remember. So now they're working on defense changes. And I've tried to avoid this as much as possible. So I don't have to, oh, I've got a fucking dunce random event. I tried to um, avoid this as much as possible. Watch me speed run this quickly. All right, here we go. Lantern, ready? Lantern, go. Lantern, go. Lantern, go. All right, we're out, thank you. Um, so let's see what they've got to say. Um, we're, we're back for our second project, Rebalance Blog. Shut up. Um, the, this one's likely to be much shorter than our previous skilling focus blogs. It's gonna be shorter, okay. Um, but there's a fair bit more uh, on the technical side of old school to go over, okay. That being said, if technical blogs, uh, DPS characters or numbers in general aren't your scene, don't fret, we'll be opening a beta world right as the blog goes live. Oh, so there's a beta world already. Oh, that's pretty badass, okay. Um, to give you some hands-on experience of everything. Maybe we, we, we might have to check that out too then, hey? Check the, the beta out, depending on how this goes. Um, what are we talking about? Defense changes for NPCs. Our focus uh, for this blog is on rolling out changes to NPC defense, including adjustments to their existing defensive bonus values, as well as adding some new defense uh, types in the form of split up range defense and elemental weaknesses for magic. All right. If you'd rather skip out on reading a load of numbers and tables, uh, we've got you covered. They've got a video here. So is this video taking a short break from uh, obtaining every pet to give you a breakdown? Now, nah, fuck that. The only person that does break down blogs properly is me. So we're going to skip over that. I uh, don't trust Coxie enough. Uh, before we get rolling, this is how... This is the how, and let's cover the why. Oh, so before we cover the how, let's cover the why. All right, cool. So we know why, basically, they want to make uh, changes so that content isn't so dead. One of our primary motivators here is kind of selfish in that these changes provide us more with more levers, levers to pull for balancing NPCs in the future, which in turn provides us with new avenues to meaningfully expand reward space. Reward space in Old School Runescape gets trickier every year, of course, with power creep, uh, something you and us are both extremely conscious of, but also most of the players in Moonscape have no fucking clue what power creep is and try to exercise sparingly where possible. In some cases like raids, it makes sense to move the needle upwards, but it doesn't make sense to display something like the Tebow with a reward from Slayer Boss, for example. Exactly. Okay. In these cases, we've been increasingly filling in gaps or niches to introduce items that flesh out horizontal progression, meaning items like the Dragon Hunter Lance that really excel in a couple of use cases, but don't outright beat every other melee offering. Makes perfect sense. The vid is really solid. Good job to Jarex on that one. In terms of graphs, make it understandable. All right, well, I'll have to turn the sound on later to watch it if we don't understand this blog. The idea of bringing the, the right tools for the job is a huge part of old school's feel, okay? Uh, many MMOs have incremental systems. I don't give a fuck, all right. Um, our final goal is a little less broad than the other two. This is to make elemental spells, air, earth, water, and fire spells on the standard spellbook have more defined use cases across existing and future content. The dawn of powered staffs and real, uh, realizing the full potential of ancient magics, coordinated vengeance usage, um, or the consistency of thralls has left the standard spellbook somewhat in the dust in many combat scenarios, which I think is pretty much the, I mean, yeah, that's the entire lunar spellbook as well in a nutshell, right? I give a fuck, can you go back and read that word for word? Nah, sorry, I can't read. Um, where was I, sorry. Well, uh, there are some nice examples of, for fire surge providing particularly handy and Ivan's Blast remains a fan favorite among fresh face iron players. It's rare to get much direct combat utility out of the spellbook. Well, charge staffs are too powerful. Like, well, they're not too powerful. They're, they're far more powerful than standard spells at the end of the day. Remember when standard spells mattered? Yeah, they did. Um, but magic was just shit. I mean, they didn't really matter, let's be honest. Like, magic has always been garbage. And powered staffs brought magic into the question of, like, being worth your time in PVM, right? Unless you absolutely needed to use magic, there was no need to ever mage anything in this game until the Kraken came out, until Cox required you to mage um, the Ulm Hand. If you didn't have to, you never would. Like, because range was just so powerful and melee was just like, not as powerful as range, but it was still just far more consistent and accurate. And it was cheaper to run range and melee because you had the Avers. Magic was just far too expensive and the Trident of the Seas bought magic into the equation of being useful for PVM. Magic was just, I like dog shit otherwise. Like people still used it, but like you were just wasting money and time. Unless you were doing like Barrows. That was the only place it was like effectively worth your time. 
Uh, to sum up before we move on, the goals are provide us with uh, further levers, levers to, to aid in future balancing, allowing us to meaningfully expand on reward space in future updates. So basically, yeah, okay, we, we know this. We've read all this shit before. Like, they've told us this a thousand times. So elemental spells. They want to bring elemental weaknesses into the game, which people thought elemental weaknesses were part of Old School RuneScape originally, and then Jagex confirmed they weren't. Um, but these were, these were a thing in RuneScape 2, I believe, right? Um before EOC came out. Elemental Weaknesses is a stat that already exists in a handful of NPCs in the game, okay? Denoting which style of the spell they're weak to. Currently this uh, weakness is just flat out double damage uh, bonus. It's not communicated well with players and is only found in very small number of enemies. For example, things like, I would imagine, Desert Treasure when you're fighting that cunt that's made of fire, things like that. Uh, to tackle the communication point, um, our first step is simply to make elemental witnesses visible via monster examine so that you're not relying on another trip to the admittedly famous wiki, uh, whatever. Like, you're, you're still going to use the wiki, you're not going to fucking monster examine what spell is this guy weak to while I'm on the lunar spellbook that doesn't have the fucking weakness spell. L shut the fuck up. Um, so, with communicating this more clearly, we'll look at to make elemental witnesses more granular, meaning we can change exactly how weak an NPC is to a specific element rather than a blanket this number uh, can be twice as big, true or false. Okay, for every point of elemental weakness that an NPC has, your spell of that element will gain 1% accuracy and 1% damage. That's pretty big. This means that casting Fire Surge on an NPC whose monster examiner displays fire 50% will gain 50% accuracy and damage. 50% damage is insane. Uh, when, it becomes, when it comes to factoring in your magic damage, elemental weaknesses look like this. Base damage, yep. X magic damage plus elemental weakness. This additive approaches. Uh, this additive approach means they receive a bigger buff in more middling middling setups. Yeah, uh, but don't scale to astronomical power in setups offering high magic damage boost. That's um, that that's pretty big actually. That's that's really nice. Okay, this gives the standard spell a bit more of a foothold on combat progression. Though it's not going to be the case that you'll suddenly go from using Dragon Hunter Lands to Earth Surge against Adamant Dragons. These flesh out options for players throughout the magic journey, but aren't looking to displace properly optimized setups. Like you're probably going to want to use water spells on fire giants, for example, now, and it's probably going to absolutely fuck. Like that, that's that's probably what you're going to end up doing. Moss giants, fire spells, you're going to fuck them. Um, I don't know what else. Uh, I, I don't know how elemental they go. Like if Earth is going to be strong against adamant dragons, and I don't know how deep they're going to go. Sorry, going to go amongst like different NPCs. Um, cause I can't imagine like, I don't know, fucking, what, what, what's a monster like? I don't know what blood veils are going to be weak to. Probably nothing because they've got good magic capabilities already, right? Dev speak for dude chill, best and stop weapons aren't already changing. Um, I guess so, yeah. Notice the NPC changes in the news. Yeah, this is what I'm looking at now. Elemental spell scaling, so, um, anyone who's fire striked or is struck their way through early game questing knows that the high level elemental spells do more damage, yeah, air, water, air, fire. This means that casting fire spells are always the best damage option and might lead to some odd oddity in the earlier stages of progression where water spells might lose out to fire spells, even if an NPC is weak to water. Uh, we'd like to let players choose to use whichever spell an NPC is weak to rather than defaulting to fire in all scenarios. We'd like to have each tier of elemental spells share the same max hit up to the cap of the existing damage. Okay, so they're going to buff everything. That's really good, actually. And I think makes a lot of sense to do. Blood builds aren't elemental. Right, but do, like, are, are fucking Adamant Dragons elemental? I, I wouldn't say they are either, right? But, I mean, I don't fucking know. Um, but this this is actually pretty big, though. For sure, I like that. As long as they balance it with the fire spell max hit, of course. Similar turns of play with level 5 magic would have a max hit of 4 for both wind and water strike since water strike is the highest tier spell unlocked and has a max hit of 4. If a player ascends uh, to the lofty heights of level 13, then wind, water, earth, fire strike will have the max hit of 8 since the highest spell. That's perfect. Yeah, that, that's badass for sure. Adamant Dragon is kind of our elemental if you count poison as an element. Fuck you. This would apply to all the elemental tiers. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, none of these tiers would scale past their current max hit, meaning even at level 99 you still have max hit of 8 and strikes, but that, that makes perfect sense. Cool. These changes mean players are freed up to use whichever element uh, they want, which means air spells naturally become the best when there's no elemental changes of the three because it's just the cheapest to run. Um, because you only need to use an air staff, that's it. 
awesome. Before we move on, you might be wondering exactly where this is, Time of Fire, Time of Water. Time of Fire was designed at the time where its goal was to make the standard spell more relevant and it succeeded in doing so to some extent, albeit only for the fire spells and uh, only while the tome was equipped. With the aim of these changes being to make elemental spells relevant throughout a player's entire progression rather than depending so heavily on a single item, we'll be looking to reduce the damage bonus from the Time of Fire and Time of Water down to 10%. Sell your tomes now, boys. For their respective elements that that's a panic cell for sure they don't talk about it in this blog but they said it would work like this air smoke water ice earth shadow fire blood okay it might not be exactly correct but you get the idea now i get that okay makes sense uh, this still makes them best in slot for their target use cases in by a significant amount while being more obtainable than other magic offhands like the elitist ward and not being relied on to carry the entire spellbook combat relevance okay so so they're getting nerfed, basically, is what they're saying. Specified that, well, technically water would be getting buffed still, right? Because water's max hit is going up, but then being, but the tome is being reduced by 5%. So the water and the tome of fire are going to be the exact same now. But technically water is getting a buff while fire is getting nerfed. They specified that wind spells will be balanced by nothing being weak to wind, by the way. Mm, that's silly. Um... In PvP, the existing damage buffs would be unchanged, of course. Players themselves don't have elemental weaknesses, so reducing the effectiveness of these tomes isn't necessary. The magic struggles to compete with other styles enough as it is in PvP scenarios. Yeah, magic is just fucking, like, so shit to rely on. Where the 5% player difference? I don't know what that means. Uh, we've got one more short section before some detailed examples. Okay, so we've got ranged defense types now. Okay, so... One thing that makes uh, melee reward feel uh, space feel so diverse is that melee has obviously stab, slash, and crush. Combining these defense bonuses with defense level of the NPC means that different situations might warrant the scythe over the Inquisitor's mace or the fang, or the faster weapons like the blade or the rapier. All right. So, range defense is just what it says on the tin, regardless of what weapon you're using. While fact, uh, factors like the target's magic level, hit points, overall defense level play a role, it's distinguishing between the Twisted Bow, Toxic Blow, Pirate Zara Crossbow, and Bow, Farden, Heat, and Hung, Shmoogadugan. Range defense isn't really a relevant distinguishing factor here, of course. Uh, we'd like to take the time to approach the melee, as melee has and split range defense types into three categories. Okay. Allowing us to better promote some range, uh, some weapons over others in certain NPCs encounters and providing us more avenues to meaningful expand on okay, whatever so we've got heavy bolts and javelins so bolts are considered heavy makes sense standard arrows this includes the the bow and the the bow from the crystal bow magical arrows are still arrows and then light which is dart knives and other throwing weaponry right that's pretty good I hate pauses in between no I don't know what you mean um that's that's going to be interesting is that i mean it depends how they balance it now right i guess like if things mm, fuck i don't know man that's going to be very interesting to deal with and is it going to matter a whole lot with the bofa like because that's already like incredibly accurate it's, like, it's what the most accurate range weapon in the game behind the heavy ballista maybe uh that's pre-fucking crystal armor so i don't know that's going to be very interesting to deal with since these defenses are based on the ammunition that you're using rather than specifically how you're attacking a, uh, how you're attacking a weapon, you wouldn't you won't suddenly have a bunch more gear bonuses to manage or anything. You won't be accumulating new bonuses for heavy ranged accuracy or having uh, to select between heavy slash light attack styles on the same weapon. Just the ammo you're using, okay, uh, will hit more often against NPCs who are weak to it. Okay, that makes sense. Um, we've outlined uh, below some NPCs might have had re reductions in one range defense type or increases in others to better carve out niches. Okay. Um, it says, oh, okay, so below, yep. Is there, if there's any NPC we don't specifically mention or touch on in the examples and list below, you're safe to assume that all three range style defense types are equal to their existing range defense. Okay. The NPC with 70 range defense would have 70 light, standard and heavy. Makes sense. Okay. ZCB going up. Uh, I mean, it depends on what they show here. So some examples. Example one is Adam and Dragon. Everyone's favorite walking slayer points? No. Um, the Adamant Dragon is a seriously tanky NPC. These metallic menaces have high hit points, decent defense, and a whopping 272 defense. Okay. So, let's take a look at their live versus rebalance stats. So, live stats, it's 30 defense, and their range defense is just 95 normally. So, now they're going to have 30 defense, a uh, 20 defense and stab. Okay. 
Um, 65 for heavy, so bolts would be better than using the bow file. But is is that going to work though? Like, is 30 defense enough? I mean, it probably doesn't matter. But like, if if the difference here is 30 defense, the bow is probably still going to be better than a fucking crossbow, like a Zarek crossbow here, because the bow is going to be far more accurate and the bow is going to be faster. So, I mean, like. That's cool that they're doing this, but the, the numbers are going to have to be quite significant for the Bofa to still like be beaten as a competitor here. And then you've got plus 50% Earth Weakness. I don't know if there needs to be any logic behind it, but that's cool to know at least. Who uses ranged on added dragons anyway? People that don't want to get meleeed. You know? With Dragon Hunter Crossbow too. Dragon Hunter Crossbow... The Bofa might still beat it, man. Because it is faster. Dragon Hunter Crossbow with, with Diamond Bolts? I don't know. Like, it, it, it depends if 95 defense is, is, a, is a lot. It's not really a lot. With 272 defense, maybe. I don't know. But it depends. Like, how much is 95 standard defense? I don't think it's meant to be competitive, just viable. No, absolutely. You're right. Yeah, you, you are right, for sure. It's just interesting to look at and, and like, question it and just see see what we, what, we, what we get out of it. It'd be very interesting. The Sang? Um, I mean, you could already Sang this, but, I mean, plus 50% Earth Weakness... It sounds like Earth spells are probably going to be the way to go here still. It's a lot of work for them. No, it's not. They'll, they'll get this done easy, dude. They actually have a range defense of 95 represented by the same value of all three defense types. Yeah, okay. Changes here are reduced stat defense by 10, reduced heavy range defense. Okay, so basically they're just going to be more vulnerable to bolts than they already are. Otherwise, it's the exact same. They have DPS calculations in the video. Not sure if they are in the blog. I... I We'll wait until the whole thing comes to the game. We can go to the beta world and test it anyway, can't we? Full both, you need extended end. If I know you need super anti fire, yeah. Pretty simple uh, from here to work out that this means players will experience greater specialization with stab weaponry, which they already would have anyway, uh, especially if they're still wanting to use a Dragon Hunter Lance. Uh, see more success with Earth spells at some point and further cement bolts as the go to ranged option. Okay, I think we might have to check the beta world out later and just give it a crack, eh? Seems like ACB is dead content. ACB has been dead content since the Zara crossbow came out, man. Uh, Mid-game setup. So, what do we got here? We ran some numbers using these changes for two progression points. The first uh, being more mid-game with stats around 80 and using gear like the ring crossbow, Aaron's robes, and black dragon hide, fighter torso. While the second encompasses absolute maxed stats and gear. Let's take a look at some really quick comparisons. Keep in mind that magic defense and elemental weaknesses aren't multi multiplicative. So the max hit does, doesn't does increase by a flat 50% in each case. So, mid-game setup. Your live max hit is 20. And 1.8 DPS with Earth Blast, Broad Bolts, okay. Dragon Sim, 33. Um, okay, Warp Staff, 21. And then rebalance max hit, you're going to be looking at 28. So you're going to have 8 extra max hit. The Broad Bolts are going to be the same but a higher dps because of the defense reductions d skim is not going to change at all dragon sword is going to be this is just on adamant dragons right like why would you use a d skim on the cunt anyway warp scepter isn't going to change either all right and then this is for the max setup so currently harmonized staff with earth surge is 34 it's going to go up to 46 being a 71 percent dps increase Jesus fucking Christ, that is massive. Sang Staff's gonna be the same, right? Dragon Hunter Crossbow plus Dragon Diamond Bolts E. 9.68 DPS increase, that's pretty big. Okay, yeah, no, that is massive, hey. Blade of Saldor, 50, 54. Would it be good if they put the, the, the both on here? Then it would have been easy to figure out, but. That's a uh, Dragon Hunt Lance still remains best, but then Earth Surge, that's with the Harmonized Orb, okay? Because that becomes a four tick attack, right? Rather than five tick. Um, but shit, that could help the Harmonized Orb a lot, which helps the Nightmare. So that's pretty fucking big, man. That's a massive increase. We can see the Elemental Weaknesses addition shoots Earth Spells into relevancy. Yeah, of course. But you're gonna, if you don't have the Harmonized Staff, you're gonna just stick with the Shadow, aren't you, at the end of the day? Uh, while well, keeping Dragon Hunter lands at best and slot option. Additionally, bolts can see increase in DPS potential, particularly in the lower tier setup, and even the humble Dragon Sword sees pretty significant jump in power. Very cool. Gargoyles, here we go. Um, they are increasing stab and slash defense. Right, okay. Interesting. They're not touching the crush defense. Well, that's because you're better off whipping than using crush at the moment anyway, but fair enough. 
um, and heavy defense is dropping. They want you to start crossbowing these fuckers, eh? Or javelin. I mean, javelin them would be pretty sick. Um, defense level is 107, and crush is becoming negative 20. Right. That's really good. Crush is the strongest attack style versus a uh, choose versus gargoyles on paper, but actually it's better. Difference between crush and weapons and similar stab and slash weapon isn't all that significant. Nah, you just whip the cunts. It's way better. But now they fix nightmare drop rates. The drop rates and nightmare are fine. The nightmare just needs to have two rolls on the drop table. The rates, the rates are fine. Um, it should just roll twice. One guaranteed to be uh, consumable, and the other one to be something else, like the cowfight queen. That's the best way to fix a nightmare. Changes above aim to really cement crush uh, feeling worthwhile against gargoyles, especially with the zombie axe introduction. True, uh, by creating a bigger disparity between crush and other styles, but using slash or stab weapons are, as you are likely, as you likely are at the moment, should still feel just fine. Yeah. So <clears throat> basically, the whip is going to get slightly worse, but like you are now heavily encouraged to use crush, which I think is big, and and like bolts too, which is pretty cool. That, I, I like that, that's for sure. Giant Mole, here we go. One of the simplest bosses, of course. Uh, but the simplest example, here we go. We've got Water Weaknesses. Fair, everything else is the same, hey? They're just making it weak to water. Cool. I don't know if cunts are going to start maging him, though, right? Well, you can four hit with Darok. I mean, maybe. I don't know. With the Harmonized Orb, probably. Um, we chose this example because it doesn't specifically push any existing weakness but it does uh, open avenues for new farming methods for bosses or content you engage with primarily later in your journey, in this case, pet hunters. Uh, this doesn't necessarily push the Twister Bell Tomb and Shadow out of the spotlight, but we're curious if this sort of approach is an area you'd like to further explore. Okay, just leave alone. If you have any ideas for new cool elemental style of split range style weapons um, that you'd like to see introduced, let us know. Okay. So they're gonna like add to elemental. Uh, they're gonna add elemental stuff to NPCs over time. Is that what I'm getting here? It seems a bit arbitrary for weaknesses. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with variety. Like at the end of the day, adding a water weakness to the giant mole has zero fucking impact on the game, right? Because you can still Darok bomb. You can still bow for Tebow Shadow. You can still go in and, and fist him if you want to. Um, this just adds. Th this is purely just adding another way to fight him. So th th there is like zero negative effect here at all, right? I'm all about variety, don't get me wrong, it just seems kind of random. Well, no, it, they, I mean, well, it's not random in the fact that they've dropped this blog because they told us this was coming, uh, but they explained up here why they're doing it, right? That this is, this part up here um, is why it's not random. They want to open up the avenue of the sort of content they can bring into the game. They want to not have themselves limited. Like for example, Jagex is having a problem with special attack weapons because the Void Waker is your go-to spec weapon, right? And that's why they want to look at nerfing. I don't know if it's mentioned in here, but they want to look at nerfing the spec in PVM because how do you make a new spec weapon that beats the Void Waker that isn't busted? It, it's kind of just like they've they hit a brick wall. And Old School RuneScape has a limited ceiling. We're going to hit a fucking point in this game where we can't go any further. So by them doing this and rebalancing, they are... They're basically shifting. They're, they're moving the ceiling. They're raising it a bit for us so they can bring more more content to the game. Looks like Shaman to be one of the best updates ever added. Possibly. It's only said magic damage on the weaknesses, right? Not more magic. Yeah, damage and accuracy. So this is 50% accuracy and damage for the weaknesses. Uh, it, and it's not always 50%. If it's like 40%, it's 40% increased accuracy and damage. It's it's all the same. It's ESC about doing ESC. Not really, no. ESC was not like this at all. This was before ESC. We had weaknesses. and I'm pretty sure RuneScape 2 had weaknesses. It didn't work specifically like you have... Um, you're going to get a certain percent, but like water spells on fire giants were more effective than other spells. I'm pretty sure in RuneScape 2. E EOC is, this isn't EOC at all. EOC was redesigning the entire combat structure to basically be, you're playing fucking Diablo. Th this, this is just giving more variety to your current combat system. Like you're, it's still tick based click. And then you've got a four tick, uh, four tick cycle uh, of you whipping the cunt over and over. Like the, the mechanics are the exact same. You just have more variety of which style of attack you want to use. Like for example, melee, you've got stab, slash, and crush. Now for range, you might not want to blowpipe everything. You might want to use the magic short bow over the blowpipe on certain mobs. Or if bolts, right, heavy defense, if bolts count as that new hunter crossbow, right, where is it? Where'd they put it here? If bolts count as those new hunter crossbows for heavy, man, anything with weak heavy, like 
take the fucking hunter crossbow to the adamant dragons you're going to rip that kind of part that's going to be fucking mad there obviously dragon hunter crossbow is probably going to be better but like a three tick fucking crossbow against something that's got low heavy defense man you're gonna like gargoyles man take the hunter crossbow here negative 20 you're gonna absolutely fucking ruin the man new crossbow is going to go hard adamant dragons it's going to fuck man it's way too complimented to implement properly i don't think so they're, they're just doing exactly what they've got with melee with ranged that's all they're doing it's the exact same system both go from 6.7 to 6.4 on giant mole with my 94 range finally i'm in end game enough to complain about nurse fair enough well good thing that when complaining doesn't get you anywhere so that that's good melee dominates slayer pretty hard i think range dominates slayer hard right range range is the strongest attack style in the game always has been and it likely always will be like you, you, you it's it's the most accurate it's i mean if you want ruby bolts it's the hardest hitting and the ability to safe spot with it and not be in melee range of most of your npcs is just busted like range is always the fucking play but leveling ranged early is just cringe but once you get the brain crossbow you've you've got it right could really close the dps gas between best and slot and second best and slot you really could absolutely yes or it, it could it could create new second best and slot methods as well so that people don't need to rely on a scythe anymore to do certain content when you could mage instead now you could take fire spells and if you don't have a scythe but you've got a blade but like vardos is 80 percent weak to water just sit there mage in the cunt and now you've got you've got a, a new way to fight him and then you die because you've got no defense and you still hate the boss anyway because it's designed to fuck you regardless but you know diversity is fun magic has only become mainstream because shadow yes yes and shadow is far too strong for magic in my opinion it's true they implemented the melee defense model for range but i still think the scope of this is way too large considering how many npcs there are well i think it from what i'm gathering here it looks like they're going to slowly implement it to current npcs they're not going to do all of them. Like, I don't imagine goblins are getting a weakness. I don't imagine moss giants, maybe even fire giants are getting weakness. Demons may be getting some sort of weakness. I don't know. Um, but I'd imagine as they introduce new NPCs to the game, they're going to come with these magical weaknesses and they're going to slowly build on it. I think that's what they're probably going to do. I, I, I don't think they're going to try and do every single NPC. Moss giants getting weakness? Well, there you go. Yeah, you know. It makes sense because they're grass, right, at the end of the day. wonder if this is finally uh, make Demon Bane spells and I'll say it's usable. No, they, they, they are usable already. Try to add Demonics and it had worse DPS than Dragon Skin. Demonics have a higher magic level. That's your problem there. You're, you're, you're using magic on, on shit that has a high magic level. That's That was never going to work. This is the weaknesses at the bottom, pros at least. Okay, I, I don't know. We, we're only at the, the full change list. Here we, oh, here we go. The full change list. All right, so we've covered the why and the how. Let's talk, take a look at which NPCs we're changing. Below is a table that effectively summarizes whether an NPC has had an elemental weakness added, whether its melee defensive bonuses have been adjusted, and whether the NPC has had split range defense types adjusted. So if it hasn't had any adjusted, then its range defense is now the same for all three range styles. For information on the specifics of these numbers, uh, you can click here. Okay, who gives a fuck? Um, actually, no, that might be good. We'll, we'll grab that. Um, if you'd rather not look at the spreadsheet or a big table, you can scroll down to the next section where we detail the Elvis Harris Wiki DBS calculator. All right. All right. Let's have a look at this fucking list. Here we go. Um, so we've got Adamant Dragons being weak to Earth um, and their melee and range is being adjusted. Looks like most of these are being adjusted. You've got Baby Black, Baby Blue, Black, Blue dragons all weak to water bronze dragons so it looks like metal dragons are weak to earth um brutals are weak to water commander ziliana is getting a ranged defense change and so is the corp corporal beast with ziliana oh that's gonna be interesting i wonder if they're gonna do bolts or not uh drakes are weak to water and getting changes fire giants are all water no other changes gargoyles uh no spell changes but getting both range and melee Okay, green dragons, water, sure. Ice trolls, anything ice, all fire, no other changes. Iron dragons, earth again, metal dragons. King black dragon, weak to water. That'd be interesting. Um, it might have been me that was lagging for a second. My apologies. Uh, lava dragons, weak to water. Lizard men, no changes, but they're getting... Ooh, I wonder how lizard men are going to go. That's going to be interesting. Um, mythal dragons, weak to water. Moss giants, fire. Mountain trolls, fire. Pyre fiends, water. I mean, it makes sense, right? Earth, red dragons are earth. Rune Dragons of Water. Is that a typo? Are you sure? I mean, I'm not... Oh, no. Mythal Dragons of Water, too. Okay. Red Dragons of Earth. That's interesting. 
Um, Steel Dragon's Water, all right. Pyrefiend Earth, Worm Earth, uh, Abyssal Portal, Vassa. Okay, so they're having different range changes. That's cool. Oh, that Vassa better get a Crush nerf because I love I love Elder Mold in that cunt. Type of their set of better. Okay, cool. Skeletal Mystics is none, but these changes awesome. Ice Demon, Fire, beautiful. Basilisk Knight, they're probably going to be light. Um, Totem for the Nightmare, Fire, ooh. That's going to put the Harmonized Door back on top of the Nightmare for sure. Baba's getting range changes, cool. Leviathan, range changes. Duke is getting melee changes, boys. Duke's going to get a slash nerf, guarantee it. Guarantee fucking it. Um, what is this? Oh, okay. Didn't ask. Um, yeah, we know how the calculator works. Okay, so from top to bottom, these fields, uh, max hit the highest possible, uh, oh, no, I fucking know how that works, mate. Let's have a look. Oh, my God. All right. Oh, shit. Um, let's have a look at, uh, Commander Ziliana. This one's important, I think. Can we zoom in? We can. All right, so Commander Ziliana, let's have a look. Um, right here, we've got the range defense is currently 100. So what does that mean? Commander Ziliana is here. So she's going to go to 75 heavy. So now, so it's going to be better to use bolts on Ziliana than arrows. So this might put Zarek Crossbow ahead of like the T-Bow, maybe. It'll put a crossbow ahead of the Bofa, maybe. I don't know. That's 25 less defense on, on Ziliana's uh, heavy defense. That's pretty interesting. Mind highlighting Shamans next? Shamans, yes, that's a good one. I want to look at that. Shamans. So, um, Shamans currently have zero range defense. And they are now, where are the shamans? Shamans are there. These are shamans here. So we've got negative 20 stab, negative 10 on light. So the blowpipe's gonna be even better, um, even more accurate, which is handy because the, the blowpipe obviously got nerfed. So this is technically buffing the blowpipe for the shamans, which is a dub, I think. That's pretty good. Trident typers, trident is, I don't know, does the trident count as water? It would be typeless. This is this is only for standard spells. Elemental weakness type. I don't think that would count. No, that it, it would just be just magic damage. It would it would ignore those factors. I'd imagine. Uh, what else have we got here? I want to see mithril dragons. What are they changing here? They're giving bolts a buff. Awesome, and stab a buff. Cool. That's good. So everything is kind of getting buffed. But what will getting buffed for us? Vasa. Here we go. But this is what I want to know. I want to know. Vasa, what are they doing here? That's Vasa there. 40. 40 crush down. For, is that down? Nice. So, take, so from it's going from 50 crush defense to 40, which is massive, and then bolts too. So Vasa, it's probably going to make the Zarek crossbow. The T bow probably still be better, but I think um, I mean I love Elder Mauling Vassa. Crushing Vassa I think is better than ranging in my opinion. I reckon if you have full Inquisitors and Inquisitors Mace or like Dragon Hunter Lance, uh, hitting Vassa with melee is absolutely the fucking way to go over the T bow. Um, you just have to be it's the, it's the way that you move around that you want to get there quick. But that's going to be even better to be honest. That's fucking mad. I love that Vassa's Knights is getting a nerf on everything by the looks of it. Yep, they're, they're nerfing all the range styles, which is cool. Oh no, they're buffing the- oh, they're buffing that one. Get the fuck out of my way. So actually, darts and knives are worse on Basilisk Knights after this, but it's better to use bolts- way better to use bolts. And crush. And arrows. But if you use arrows and Basilisk Knights, you're gonna die, so... Fair enough. Baba is getting a bolt. They're cutting Baba's bolt defense in half. All of Baba's defense is dropping, but his bolts are getting cut in half, which is insane. Are they? Hold on, they're, they're increasing his fucking melee defense. No way. Or is this a typo? That's his new heavy defense. Is 120 down from... Oh no, that's just his range level, right? Okay, sorry, I'm reading this. I'm reading this wrong. Okay, so no, okay, no, that's right. It's down from two hundred, right? My bad, sorry. So the the bolts are even better on Baba now, which is good for people that are trying to ruby bolt if you don't have a fang. Um, and the Duke, where's the slash defense? Slash defense is the middle column here at sixty five. It is now forty five. So Duke is getting nerfed on the slash defense, which is big. 
That's pretty good. Since when do we range Bubba? If you don't have a fang, sit on the crossbow, dude, and hit the ruby bolts. Trust me. It hurts. They, they fuck. And they're going to get even better now because his range defense is dropping by 80 on bolts. Highlight the rose so you don't lose track. Ah, it's fine. I got it. It's all good. That's pretty good. That's a that's a nice little graph I recommend checking out. I think that's um That's not bad. I might I might consider checking out the open beta tomorrow, I think. I don't think I found a single problem going through this blog. I think I like all of it. Was there any complaints that I had? I don't think there was. Um they seem to have, they seem to have a pretty a pretty good grip on what they want to do. Like they they've got a nice selection of NPCs here that matter. Like I can't imagine there being anything on here that needs to really be changed. Where'd it go? Um The spreadsheet, this is the spreadsheet here, right? I can't imagine, like, there's no need to have any demons on here, really, because demons already have demon bay weak, demon bay weakness, and they're already weak to magic, so, like, you like trident would be fine. Um, there's no need for, like, changes on them. They've already got low defense. When's the update going into effect? They're doing beta tests at the moment, so don't expect it for a while. I, I would say give it, like, let them do the beta test, and then they'll review it. They'll let us know if they're confirming. We'll hear about this again before they bring it in. TLDR in, the sen in a sentence or two. Um, everything's getting better. Any raid changes or just bosses? Uh, there's Baba changes, and there's Vasa, and there's Vespula Portal. Oh, the Vespula Portal I want to check, actually. 140 range defense and 60 mage defense. And they're changing it to... I should have highlighted it. Vespula Portal... That one there. So they're making bolts. They're making bolts better on the portal. Okay. Fair enough. Can't complain. Show on the better world. Uh, I'll probably do it tomorrow or something. I think everything seems to be over fifty percent or hundred percent elemental weakness at the moment too. Like we've got a hundred percent here. Water weakness on pyrophenes. 100% on Water Fiends. 100% on the Totem and the Nightmare. 100% increased accuracy and damage from Fire Spells on the Totem. That's fucking insane, man. If you have a Harmonized Staff... Because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure the Harmonized Orb with Fire Surge was slightly better than the Shadow in the Nightmare as raw DPS, but it wasn't as practical. Like, the Shadow was still a better choice to take. I'm pretty sure, but this is just going to absolutely blow it out the fucking park. 100% increased accuracy and damage, and if you don't, and if you get the triple hit off, you're going to fucking, you're surely going to like two hit the totem. Really made a smarter Excel sheet clear. Whoever made this helped with the bubble puzzle room. I don't give a fuck, dude. I don't dabble enough of Excel to criticize people. One shot the pillars. Yeah, pretty much. You're going to fucking destroy those pillars. That's going to like make a new PB. I like it. I respect it. Good changes. I, I think this is good. I think this is a good way to take it. Um, I'm glad no one in the chat was bringing up EAC really too much. There's only like one comment on it and it wasn't even that retarded because I've seen some people on Twitter crying. Obviously, people that complain about EAC have never played RuneScape before. So um, I think this is looking good. I might I'll, I do want to check the beta out eventually. Um, but this is, I think, I think they, they're clearly taking their time with this. I think if they implement it right, it could be really well done. It looks good. I like the range changes. It um, opens up a bit of diversity. If you don't have a Tebow, it means using a crossbow at some places is actually really nice. EAC was trash, just creates, this uh, just creates variety, exactly. So um, that's really good. So yeah, no, nah, big dub to Jagex, fuck yeah. That's awesome. This is the easiest room in the raid. It's quite simple. You got a big boy, look at him, god damn. Fuck, mate, look at that boy. It's huge. You got a big boy.